Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to do a little battle of the concealed carry firearms. As you can see, we are safety checked on both of these guys. However, I just wanted to kind of recap my experience and hopefully these decisions and quite frankly mistakes can help you guys make your correct decision without wasting a ton of money how I did when I was picking my uh, concealed carry firearm. So to begin with, um, so you have some background. I, like I said, made some mistakes. So I bought a Springfield Hellcat. That was originally my first um, concealed carry gun. And then I switched over to a P365. And both of them just did not work for me. I was not a good enough shooter to enjoy shooting them. And more importantly, be accurate shooting them. I could pretty much hit stuff between 10 to 15 feet. And then after that, it was very tough for me. Um, they have very heavy triggers in both of them. Um, leading to a lot of, of uh, trigger uh, snatch. And so I was shooting left quite a bit. I also was anticipating the recoil, so I was shooting left and low. And um, not that I couldn't hit anything, but it very definitely could not have been precise shooting. Like it would have had to have been a full person. I would have had to have needed the, or that would have been the sole purpose of the uh, use of the firearm. There's no precision shooting. And not that you have to be a precision shooter to be able to defend yourself, but you wanna be confident enough to where if you're gonna, let your life depend on a gun one that's reliable two that you'll be able to hit your intended target not somebody standing next to them or behind them or whatever the case may be in front of them whatever the case may be you shouldn't probably be shooting if somebody's in front of you but do, these are just hypothetical so just wanted to, to bring up bring up a couple things a lot of people don't run those scenarios but let's just say you're in a house and a couple feet to the left is a family member and somebody breaks in and you, all you have on you is your concealed carry gun, you're gonna wanna be able to know that you're gonna be able to hit the intended target. So of every gun that I have tested, owned, everything like that, these have been my favorite. Now, I will tell you a couple things. I do love the grip of the P365X macro. However, what I have learned is it's just thinner than like a M18, but it concealability wise protrudes the same amount as the M18 and I enjoy shooting the M18 more than I do this guy. It does have a built-in compensator into the physical slide as you can see, you see the, the divots there. So what happens is the barrel ends at the end of the, or at the beginning of the first, um, I guess perforation there or compensation, whatever you wanna call it, the first slide cut, um, the first opening it has, that's where the barrel ends. So the whole point of this is as the bullet is passing through the, the, the actual barrel, and then, it, you know, once it, once it starts to shoot, it's going to have some gas push up so that I'm forcing the muzzle down to help reduce recoil. So does it work? Yes, it does. Does it make a huge difference? I really don't know. It's very hard to describe because I have not shot in like an XL or anything like that, or I guess if there was an XL that you could put the macro frame onto because you're also getting a much bigger grip module. So it's really hard to tell if that's legitimately it. Um, I do like this one because you can put a 913 uh, TLR 7 sub uh, light on here. So it's 500 lumens and it's a really bright light. And then it also comes directly cut for the hollow sun um, <clears throat> 407 slash 507K uh, footprint. So you're able to get a a uh, green dot as you can see in there hopefully you can see that let me see do i even yeah it's got a little bit of dirt in there but i also just got this gun um out of the safe let me see there we go so the light was definitely on camera avoiding it but nevertheless you're able to get a nice dot I will tell you, the hollow suns are definitely nice. The finish doesn't hold up as nice as like uh, uh, the Trijicon does. It's a little bit slicker and easier to scratch up. The tint is significantly less, which um, at nighttime scenarios, I think it's nicer. But a majority of the time, I feel like when you'd probably be, you know, in the event of defending yourself or whatever the case may be, you'll probably be using it in the daytime just because a majority of the time you're out in the day. So I think that you know, home defense situation, you're probably not even gonna pick this guy up. So that's just my two cents. I, I wish it had more tint on the hollow sun. I actually, I thought it was a kind of a nuisance when I first got my Trijicon, but then I really have come to really appreciate the site. And actually Trijicon is, makes my favorite um, RMRs and SROs. The SRO is my favorite of all, but I do like the RMR as well. Um, 
However, this is still a great site. I'm not knocking this entirely. It's not a bad site. That's not what I'm getting at. It's just I'm trying to just make points so that way people can understand when you're going to decide between the two what is more important to you. Now, whenever you're aiming at any sort of light uh, source, so like let's say the light was in front of me, it's going to hit your glass and you're gonna have punch through so you won't be able to see your sight, which is essentially why I had to turn that off to get that because there's not enough tint on here. Um, and it's a little bit, but it definitely could be better. So that's one thing, but I do like that it's already optic cut. So for, I think you can get these guns now for $8.99, maybe a little bit less. You get an optic ready um, slide, you get x-ray night sights, which is nice. You get a flat face trigger. You get some uh, you get some ledges on your takedown levers and your uh, slide stop. Um, you get a Picatinny rail so you can add a different light on there. Uh, the magazine release is really good. The texture is really good. You get two other, so you get three total back straps so you can uh, change it out to your, your liking. Now, one thing that I've noticed is because it's a shorter sight radius and because of that, it works best with me with the short, with the short, um, thing on the back however I like the bigger one for recoil reduction but you can kind of see as I hold it in my hand if I go any further it kind of hit me there on the knuckle but this is how I have to hold it so that's something I really don't like about the physical x macro however um, that's just how it fits my hand it may fit your hand a lot better but typically when you're when you're holding the gun it should go in in like a full linear line to the elbow and it doesn't do that it's actually if I hold it how it feels good it's actually to the left considerably so I have to move it over to the right like that in order for it to be straight with my hand and my elbow and for some reason it's only an issue with this gun and I know it's part partly induced by the back strap whenever I put the little back strap on the small one which it feels the best with um, in terms of like angle um, it does have quite a bit of play in it, goes up and down. It's pretty, it's, it's a very big OCD thing for me. So I put the bigger one on there and it also does help me get a better grip on it. The more surface area you have, the less recoil you're gonna feel. And the reason that I put that on there originally is that just because of the actual recoil reduction, this gun, um, the smaller gun you go, just so you know, the physics don't really line up. People think the smaller gun, especially when you're new, the smaller the gun is, women especially, you know, they think, oh, I'm gonna get this tiny gun. It actually has more recoil than the big gun does believe it or not. So longer the barrel is, the more weight the gun has, um, the less recoil you're gonna feel. So the more, sur more surface area you have to grab, the better your um, you know, recoil management's gonna be, all the things under the sun. So uh, just a quick lesson there on that. Um, this is my M&P Shield Plus. This is the Performance Center model. So as you can see, we're clear. So what that's gonna get you is you're gonna get some enhanced texturing. So it has a really good texture here. It's not too rough. It's not even as rough as I would like it, but it's not bad. And then right here, there's a strip, as you can see. You can see there's like a, a clear, like there's nothing there. And then there's this. So this is really, really coarse, which I love. And then the same thing on the front. So these two, the combination of those two means you can get a really high and good grip on it. Um, another thing is they kind of bevel the back so that way when you put it in your hand you kind of don't get that left-handed sensation like you do um, with the other one so with the other one it's kind of like you know when i put it in my hand it feels good this one's like this and i can fully um, issue it out correctly so i like that um, when i put the other one in my hand it's kind of more to the left so then i'm either having to adjust more which isn't correct or you just kind of have to Focus a little bit more on your place, and this this one just feels more natural to my hand, I guess I should say. If you have a lo if you have longer fingers, um, that probably won't be an issue for you with the X Micro Hover. It is for me. So, with that being said, um, this is also a three point one inch um, concealed carry gun. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to is this gun has the actual porting into the barrel. This one has the porting at essentially the end of the slide. So two different, com uh, complete different configurations in that aspect of how the porting is done or compensation or uh, muzzle reduction uh, mechanism, technology, whatever you wanna call it, is done. However, I love this gun way more. So a couple drawbacks to this gun, just to be fair, I pointed out some negatives there. I'll point out some negatives on here. That right there. So. It's not too bad with the magazine in when it's loaded. You can kind of wrench down on it, but it is the, the controls on this are very stiff for these two. So this one has a manual safety. And you really, really got to get under it and over it to disengage it. So when I carry this gun, I actually don't carry it with the safety on. That's not a concern for me. Um, I do have proper equipment, so I do have a um, somewhere around here. Uh, here it is. 
I do have a holster. So that completely covers the trigger, uh, encapsulates the trigger guard. So it's not any concern for me personally. But my worry is I pull it out, I need it, and I can't disengage the safety, that would not be good. So one more time. We are clear. And another couple things that I like about this gun. So I did change out the sights. It comes with these um, kind of weird uh, red and green sights. So this is the red one. I tried to uh, burn the actual fiber optic out of there just so that way I could get it out. And the metal actually ended up disintegrating, which is kind of disappointing. There, And then that's uh, kind of what happened. So I just knocked it off. And that was it. So um, all in all, I put these Trigicon. I like the yellow front, so I put that on there. Um, but let's talk about some actual specifics of the gun. I think the magazine release on this gun, especially since they textured it, it is really nice. I, I think that's probably a bigger thing for me too, just in case you have to reload. It comes with a really nice textured magazine release. The trigger on this is milestones better. So just to show you, this guy, it is very heavy. Once you get to the wall, it is incredibly heavy, and then you just have a hard break. It's not a rolling break. I know some people like that. However, the harder you're pulling, the more chance you have of snatching the trigger, right? So, and we'll also show the reset. The reset's pretty long. And then you're back to the wall, which is, it, it's actually more correct on this firearm than it is the X5 Legion. However, this is just my observation. It is very, very heavy. At least this one is. I don't know if how everyone else's is, but the trigger in mine and my wife's, because my wife has the same gun, feels exactly the same. So it's pretty heavy. It's very heavy. So with this guy, you have quite a bit of take up. You hit that wall and then a break. And I really like the reset on it. Very short, as you can see. And it's got a crisp rolling break. It's heavy enough to where I won't accidentally let a shot off, but it's tactile enough to where I'm accurately able to shoot, get a nice purchase on the gun with the enhanced texturing. And it just, it, it's been very constant. It's been a very, very, very awesome gun to shoot. I would just tell you. So, a couple things. Um, I can shoot this gun better with irons than I can this one with the physical uh, optic. So, I'm going to ding this one for that. There's no weight under the barrel on this one. Um, and I still feel less recoil in this one. So, I'm going to dig it for that. Another thing that we're going to ding the X Macro on is the fact of the actual grip. You can see the girth on this one is much more. Um, so, concealability wise, I'm going to ding it on that. For the SIG, it's also taller. Um, this beaver tail on here is really strange. I do like it, however, if they would have just made it flat, you could still get under the original and you just, I mean, I, I think it's a little bit more extended than it should be. I mean, they could have put a little bit of a nub on there, but again, when you're carrying it, that's just another point that is going to be possibly sticking out of your shirt. So I don't like that. And it's already getting to be a bigger size gun. So this is almost the same size as my M18. It recoils more. I have less grip on it. The trigger's worse. Um, and I really just don't know. I mean, really, after thinking this one through, I probably shouldn't have bought, not that I shouldn't have bought this gun, but um and it just depends on what your frame is if you can conceal this good and you like how it feels in your hand and everything like that that's good for you but i'm telling you if you don't have super long fingers you're gonna probably have that that angling issue like i do um that constantly is making you shoot shots off to the left uh this gun has been probably through four thousand rounds and it is incredibly stiff still so and it's always like after you pull the trigger like to re-rack it it just kind of gets caught. I don't know why. It's not an actual defect. This gun's never had actually a malfunction. It's actually probably been one of the most reliable guns I've ever had. And I love it. I definitely depend, I would depend on this to save my life any day of the week. It's definitely not a bad firearm. That's not what I'm trying to get from here. I'm not trying to say don't buy this gun. I'm trying to give you some comparisons as to 
if you're gonna choose between these two, my personal preference is this one. And I would tell you if these are both on the shelf for you to try when you go to your local range, I definitely would shoot them both. I think you will enjoy this one a lot more. Like I said, recoil is there, the trigger is better. Um, the texturing is already amazing out of the box. This one comes with like a smooth surface right here. I hate that. So I stippled over it um, just so that way I'd have more grip texture. I grip my guns extremely hard with these two fingers, not really that much with my pinky. So I'm trying to push forward. So I kind of try to roll my, my hand forward in that aspect. So when I'm doing that, I'm putting a lot of pressure, kind of rolling my fingers um, and kind of lifting my webbing of my hand into the beaver tail there to help try to reduce the recoil. Same thing on this one. However, with this texture, it doesn't go anywhere and there's no stupid, I think it's stupid. So that's just my opinion. Um, polished bit there for your, for your middle finger. And after your fingers get sweaty, this really continues to let you grip onto it as this one does not. All right, guys, uh, just want to end the note with uh, thank you everybody who has liked, subscribed, and continuously tuned in for the continuous videos. Obviously, I try to upload them every Wednesday. Um, today was a pretty hectic day, so apologize for the late upload. However, next week we will be uh, reviewing my X macro, just going in a little bit more detail about that gun, the specifications, how it's held up over time. Um, after physically um, reviewing everything, it's it's mid 4,000, right around 4,500 rounds through that gun. And so I just want to talk about how it's held up and everything like that, just so um, we can kind of give a little bit more um, informative info on that gun itself. So stay tuned for that. And again, thank you guys very much.